We'd watched the rise of this extraordinary figure, El Chapa Guzman, who had become more powerful than, than Pablo Escobar, who's probably the, the name everybody knows as being the great drugs kingpin. And here was this figure who was far more powerful, running an organization far bigger. We were bizarrely rung up and said, would you like to make a film about him? And both of us went, yeah, but only if we can go and try and find him. At the beginning, it was, it was a bit of a crazy mission, yeah? Because uh, obviously to try to find the most wanted man in the world. None of the guns or threats of violence had scared us half as much as sitting at the foot of the runway with El Chino, no flight plan, and only a vague idea of where we were going. You know, we started going to Culiacan, uh, speaking with people, uh, basically trying to find our way, and until we uh, basically start, started uh, getting in touch with the right people. When we first talked about trying to find the most wanted man in the world, on the run for 13 years, we said, we bet he's there on the map. And he was exactly, exactly where we thought he'd be. It tells you some story, that. Bueno, para explicar quién es el Chapo, habría que viajar justamente a esta zona del Triángulo Dorado. The situation, particularly in Mexico, is much more complicated of what people think. The Mexicans allowed this to happen over the years because obviously in the 80s and 90s, uh, Mexico was not Colombia, but then when Colombia, uh, when they captured the leaders of the Medellin cartel and the Cali cartel, you know, the cartels in Mexico started to get stronger. And uh, what we realized is that it was that there were some areas in Mexico that were not actually controlled by the government, by, but by uh, drug lords. El Chapo has been captured, but the Sinaloa cartel, which is the biggest drug organization in the world, is still running. Uh, there's somebody else there on top. And we always knew that El Chapo, he was like the visible face of the organization. But on top of him and, and to the side, there are people who are dressed in suits and who we don't see. And they also have quite a lot of control of of the organization. I mean, this organization makes billions and billions of dollars. It's, it's not only marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamine, and it's not only America. They, they ship drugs all over the world. Somebody said to me, um, uh, put me an example uh, for Mexico, and it was, they said to me, the Mexicans went to bed with the devil, and now they want to wake up, and it's very difficult. If, if an audience watches the film, what I want is at the far end of it that they just listen to everything a bit more carefully and don't believe what they're being told because it's just at, at every level and that's from the cartels to the government so I don't think one are any better than the other in peddling a line but we're peddled a line. Mm -hmm.